hello, hi, it's Rad, and, um, today we have a game by Hocus Pocus, and that game is an American Tale Fival Gold Rush, Fival's Gold Rush, even, uh, okay, so, this is, I need to talk about this, because I tried talking about this in the original video, but, you know, you know how all that went, so, yeah. The point is, this game is based off of an American tale, which is based off of, well, not based off of anything, it's just a series of movies. Um, the first one was just American uh, an American tale, uh, and I think it was later subtitled Fievel's Journey or something. Um... And the second one is uh, an American tale, Fievel's, uh Fievel Goes R West or something. Uh, I don't fucking super remember. But um, if you don't know anything about uh, an American tale, basically it's a little bit like finding, finding Nemo, but in reverse. But also it has like... Uh, of, like, an immigration, like, bend to it. So, like, Fievel and his dad, and I think his mom? I could be wrong. Um, but Fievel and his dad are immigrating from Russia, I guess? I think? Uh, they're immigrating from Russia to go to America. Because, uh, like, that's the place to go. Like, I think, I think this takes place, um, uh, it's either taking place in the, like, space and time, like, where America was the place to be, you had to move to America, everybody's immigrating right now, have to go there, uh, to find a better life, and that's what this movie was about. Um, at least the first one. Um, and it was kind of a, 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 a sobering kind of movie. Because, like, it had some funny bits. It was, like, the character designer and art director and everything was Don Bluth. So, like, Everything was super weirdly hyper animated and uh, bouncy and shit, and so that added a little bit of like funniness to it, I guess. But it was about a kid that lost his parents in like in between trying to get to America and needed to find them again. It's like a fairly serious topic, and it was handled very, like, not super seriously, but fairly enough seriously. And, um, first, uh, let me just say that this game looks like shit, and to please, please, please stop using 3D models in GBA games. It's a little late for me to be pleading the case against 3D models in GBA games, but hey, I'm gonna say it anyways because it needs to be said. Stop doing it. It looks bad literally every single time. There's not a single time where it looks good at all, not even a little bit. Not even a tiny bit. It always looks bad. Um, back on topic. Um... So, like, the the show was, not show, but the movie was super sobering, had, like, lots of emotional bits to it, it had, like, the kind of normal, weird, Don Bluth, uh, like, sadness to everything, because it's, like, weirdly enough, Don Bluth seems to, like, add sadness to every single thing that he's done in, like, some way or another that looks really weird and is kind of off-putting, because everybody looks super sad when their faces animate 
all fluidly, which Don Blue does really well. Um, but, like, it, it ends, and he finds his dad, and I think his mom. Again, I don't remember if his mom was also there, and oh fuck, I died. It's fine. I have no- there are no punishments for dying. At all. Not even a little bit. It's all okay. But, like... The first... Movie was, like, super duper just, like... Serious time, gotta find my parents, gotta learn how to survive in America, gotta not fucking die in, in all of this. And... Then the second movie is... Five old goes to the old west, and that's it. Like, there's nothing more to it. He goes to the old wests and becomes a sheriff, I guess. I think, and like weird animal shenanigans go on because he has to find like this treasure map of gold in the west. And other people also want it. And that's kind of it. Like... Honestly, it's, it's a really simple plot. <laughs> um... It's so weird, because it was so... It was one of the first times that I saw a, a, a series so clearly go for a cash grab. Like... The first one was a Steven Spielberg movie, and it had Don Bluth, and it was a super, a super emotional thing, and it had, like, a ton of money uh, put towards it, and it did great in the box office, as far as I remember. Um, but then, like, Fievel 2 happens, the... Five goes west, and and like Steven Spielberg's not attached to it at all. Don Bluth isn't there at all to animate it. Um, and it's just two smucks that decided to like make a sequel to a movie, and that was like one of the first times I really saw that kind of thing. Because I saw both movies when I was pretty young. Because they're old as shit. They're super old. They're like, uh... Mid-90s? Movies? I think? Maybe not even mid, like, early 90s. Maybe like 2000... Uh, not 2000. Shit. <laughs> it Maybe like 1993 or 1994. Which I guess is close enough to mid, but also not. I don't know. But, like, there's such a weird thing when it comes to these kinds of movies, to, like, that specific point in time of, like, okay, we're gonna have all these animated movies, all of them, we're gonna have, like, Lion King, we're going to have, uh, the, the, the Notre Dame movie, we're gonna do Jungle Book, we're gonna do all of these. And, like, on top of that, we're gonna have, like, big-name directors on top of them. Ones that have never animated, like, a... a an, well, never done an animated film before, ever. But are probably gonna do just fine in doing it. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do all of that at once. And... That was basically what the... Like... Mid to late 90s were like. It's just, like, everybody made a fucking... Uh, animated movie all the time. There was always going to be an animated movie that was coming out at any given time. And chances are it's going to be directed by Don Bluth. And possibly inspire people to be furries. That's... That was just how life was then. And as soon as that became a big thing that was massively successful and always brought in money. People were like, okay, we're going to not make another theater release one. We're going to 
like, make a straight-to-DVD one. Or, like, in some cases, I think, even, that, um... Uh, Five of Those Rest was, uh... Uh... A theater release. But I could be wrong. Uh, don't trust me. I mean... Like, never trust me anyways. Cause... I just say... I, I say shit. I say shit, and, like... It's... Usually I, usually I mean it. I mean the things that I say, but they're usually also not true. So, don't trust me. I mean, trust me on this. Don't trust me. Uh, but, 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 um... They're gonna make these movies, and it's gonna be great. Just, like... We're not going to have anybody attached to it that were, was attached to it before. Ever. Ever, ever. Not even once that I, I can think of, like, a direct sequel to a, uh, an animated movie uh, from, like, this time that had anybody that was working on it. I mean, probably maybe some, like, s people that did, like, key animations or anything like that. That's a possibility. Uh, people that don't get, like, direct super-duper, uh, like, roles in the credits or anything. They're on the, the ones that are double-ups and everything from, uh, all that. Oh yeah, I forgot. I was trying super hard to get on that platform, and I spend the next couple minutes trying to manipulate that fucking mouse right there to come over here and do the thing. And I suck at it. And you bounce on your head, and I do it at the wrong time, because I'm bad. Um, but, like, this happens so many times. There's, there are, like, actually three fucking Lion King movies. Like, two of which... Like, there's Lion King 1, there's Lion King 2, which has, like, the next generation, all the Boruto lions. And then we have fucking Lion King... Uh... Also, for the record, I don't know what's up with that mouse cursor. Oh, wait, yeah, I do. Now I remember. Because it was just telling me to go. Fucking go. I get it. I'm, I need to go, but it's fine. Let me get this shit first. And I get that shit. And I go. Um, but, like, there's Lion King 2, which is the Boruto's. And then there's Lion King 1 and 1 half. I think that was what it was called. And that was fucking a Timon and Pumbaa movie, which was actually ever so slightly better than... Uh, Lion King 2, which is weird. Um, I for like I forget exactly how Lion King 2 worked, but it was like, uh, here's Scar Jr. He's Scar, but he's like Scar's kid or nephew or something. Uh, who did Scar have a kid with? I don't fucking know. I don't fucking remember, at least. But here he is. He's gonna have a thing with... with... fucking Simba's kid. They're gonna... be a thing. And... I don't fucking know. Uh, that's how it kind of always went. Either it was the next generation, and the next generation had, like, a thing with... with somebody else from the past generation, or fucking... Like, it was just the movie, but again. It was the last movie, but again. Because I'm pretty sure that was sort of what, uh, like, what was the one that was just the last one, but again? Oh! It was just, uh, fucking, uh, The Little Mer Mermaid 2 it was just The Little Mermaid again. And... That was such a... It was such a common thing at the time. 
and, like, even, like, past that, there was, like, it's like four Cinderella movies. All of, like, the first one is, well, Cinderella proper, and then the other ones are, like, goofy bullshit what-if stories for Cinderella. Uh, Cinderella. Sorry, I can't talk right now. It's bad. Um, but, like, it's what if, uh, the, the one wicked step, uh, stepsister was, was a shit, was, like, a shit, and was, oh, that's not a what if, but what if she was a shit, but also sad that she was a shit, and wanted to be happy, and was jealous of everybody, so Cinderella helped her. What if that was a thing that happened? I suppose that's another whole thing of, like, if it wasn't just the movie again, and it wasn't just the next generation or whatever, it was short stories of what if this thing happened in this universe or whatever, and... Fuck, man. This isn't a Disney movie, it's a... Uh, I think it's like a 20th Century Fox movie or something. But, like, I'm pretty, like, Fievel Goes West kind of followed the same thing of, like, I, actually, no, it didn't even. It was just, like, weird because it changed the uh, tone of the first movie entirely uh, from, like, it being kind of a harrowing tale of how Fievel found his parents again and, and didn't fucking die in, like, little big New York City, because I'm gonna... Uh, fuck me. Man, this episode's bad, because I'm just eating shit all the time in this episode. Um, but, um, the... The thing is, is that, like, it changed the tone of it from being a harrowing tale to... Fievel just goes to the Wild West and becomes a, a, a hero. That's all he... that's it. That's the gimmick. He's, he's a hero now. He's a sheriff. Respect his sheriff. And that's what it was. But, like... Man... So many of these movies were just sort of weird, do-whatever-the-fuck-because-we-have-the-license things. Which, granted, is still a thing proper. Why did I do that? Shit, just let it fall. I'm the worst at this. Oh, man. But, like... What... Why did it come to to this where this I'm pretty sure this isn't even actually a Fievel game based off of like Fievel Goes West. It's like kind of loosely based on it, I think, but not one to one. It's actually maybe it's what happens like afterwards. Like this is a sequel to the sequel movie. I'm pretty sure that's the case. And it's just the fucking worst. Um. But, like, yeah, I get. What did I. What? What am I doing? Ah, uh, fuck it. So, the. The biggest thing in this is, I guess, you have to collect all these butter. butter sticks. Because I refuse to call them gold, because gold isn't shaped that way in any world. It's not even, like, splintering... Not splintering, but, like, spreading out at the bottom to look sort of like a gold bar. It's just a fucking rectangle that's gold. That's not a... That's not gold at all. That's not how it works. It's just not. Oh, but... But... As things go... Uh... I suppose this isn't the worst game that's ever been, but it's certainly not a very good one either. Because, I mean, no matter 
how like small Fival is. Like the scale of everything is super fucked compared to him. Cause like Alright, so say he's as big as a baby mouse, I suppose. That means that that window that just barely covers him, like, well, not barely, but would fit maybe like seven of him on it, maybe? Maybe if you, like, cut up the last one? <laughs> um, that's, like, the tiny, and that's even tinier. These are the smallest fucking windows and buildings to ever exist. And I know that this is, like, super nitpicky and everything, but fuck me. Those, like, stovepipe things or whatever are the most useless shit in the world because they would probably puff out smoke at the actual interval intervals that it's puffing them out in. And, like, it wouldn't... You'd be dead inside your house with all that smoke that would still be in your house from not getting pushed out of there. Also, like, you can't see the fucking Statue of Liberty from every single angle in New York City. I promise. It's not a thing you can do. Um, like... <sighs> Did I just get hurt there? I don't know. I'm not gonna go and check. But, like... Everything in this part is just fucked up because you have to think about everything within the scale of everything else. Those windows are ridiculously small. Just the s tiniest windows that anybody could think of. The, like, who made the bars of gold? Or bars of butter, or whatever I want to call them at the moment. Also, a nice hat catch that I just did. But what? Like, who made those that small? Because they're, like, a third of Fievel size. And Fievel's the size of a baby mouse. And baby mouses are fucking tiny. And, like... These houses are, like pretty small, too. Like, you could fit maybe 20 fivels across with them, and that's fucking the smallest in the world. I, I'm longer than fucking 20 fivels. That's fucked. But here I fight this fucking giant cat thing. And, like... Normally, I'm not, like, hard on... A mm. <laughs> I was going to say, normally I'm not hard on anthromorphs and everything. Um, mm, that didn't come out right. That's fine. Um, but... Fucking... Who made these guys' clothes? Why is this cat, like... Only, like, maybe two and a half the size of Fievel, who's a fucking... This cat's supposed to be super huge, and he's two and a half the size of Fievel, or maybe even just two, twice the size of Fievel. That's not accurate to anything. At all. Man. Fucking either get your sizes right or don't at all. That's what I'm saying here. I'm ma- I'm- Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> I'm taking a hardline stance on wrong fucking sizes for anthromorphs, and especially anthromorphs that are supposed to be within the size of everything else, like everything else is scaled to them, except it's fucking not, because what the fuck? It'd be fine if- if this was, like, the case for, like, 
a bunch of other stuff, but like... Fucking... On a normal house? That little... Thing that's sticking up would be about the size of my leg. Meaning that Fievel is about the size of my leg, except if he was about the size of my leg, that makes everything even smaller comparatively. Or him super big. And... That just fucks with everything else because there was a button that was bigger than Fievel earlier. That's fucked up. Earlier in the video, there's a button that's bigger than Fievel. How the fuck do you explain that? With everything else. You can't. You can't explain that. Checkmate, atheists. We're just going to fucking Turbo Town with all this fucking shit that you can't explain. I... Legitimately... Want to... Understand... The scaling in this game. But there's no way that I can possibly do that. Because... This game just explained that fucking... Fievel is slightly smaller than that can, and that can is slightly smaller than these fucking toxic waste barrels. Who made these toxic waste barrels? Fuck this game. This has been rad. I love you all. Aggressively. You're the best ever. Please have a nice day.